All right, so I'm going to go over the installation and configuration of the Q level study. And the starting point is I have downloaded the DLL and the levels file to my desktop. And I have CR chart running, and um, we'll start from there. So the first thing we need to do is copy the DLL into the CR chart data folder. So to do that, I open the file explorer. Let's go into CR chart data and then take this copy paste and we have it in the data folder. Okay, so now um, if all goes well, I can open a chart. Yes. 24 CME. I can go to analysis, studies, add custom study, and if all went well, you should see this study under here. I can add that to the chart, and I can click on settings and look around and stuff. Okay, so that's that. Now, when I first load it, it gives me a message that the text file cannot be found, right? Because we're looking for the levels. So we need to copy that in as well. So let's do that. So this is the levels file. This one as well, I copied into the data folder. So I paste it into here. And then if I refresh the chart, then I should see all my levels now. Okay, so if all goes well, it basically should come out um, to this point. Now, on a daily basis, when these levels are updated, okay, you receive a new file like this one. It's basically a matter of taking the new file, copying it, pasting it into here, replace the file, and it gets updated, right? So we would have the new text file. And once you have that, you can always go into CR chart and then refresh the chart, which forces it to read the updated levels and you should see these shift to, to show the new levels. Um, refreshing is really a matter of just going into here. It's the same as that, right? Um, reload and recalculate. I just used the insert button on the keyboard. Okay, so that's basically installing the DLL, um, installing the file, and then updating the file. So far, everything has worked with the defaults, and this is kind of what it looks like out of the box. Now, going into the settings, in general, these fields do not really need to be changed, so you can just leave them as is um, by their defaults. And let's just look at the subgraphs for a second. So with the subgraphs, there's a few things that you can that are might be interesting to customize. So we have like the list of levels here, um, going from one to what is it? Um, twenty, I think it was twenty something. Nineteen, really. Line extent to end. Line extent to end. Yeah, this is the uh, level 10. So 19 of these subgraphs are populated, basically. And in order to change them, let's look at the put support, for instance, which is right here. So I can modify the width, the line, make it more um, thicker. I can change the color, right? Um, and the other thing that's interesting, I can change also how it appears. So currently, the way it's defaulted, you'll notice that it basically pulls across the whole chart and all the way to the right edge. Okay. I can also change the draw style. Oops, sorry, wrong dialog. I can also change the draw style so instead of pulling all the way to the right edge, it just does a regular line. Really, So it populates like across the chart to the last bar, not going into the edge. And I can also go to, what is it, line at last bar. Hope I 
find it. Line. Yeah, unfortunately, these are not sorted by nice bar to edge. And then it posts it from the last bar to the edge, and it doesn't um, go over the price bars. Um, let me see if we covered everything. Yeah, that's about it. So that's for the defaults and configuring the different subgraphs. Um, these should generally be left alone. I'll cover this one in a separate video. And this is really just if you want to change the file name. So by default, the file name is going to be this, and it's the same file name as we have um, here, right? This one. Now, if forever, for whatever reason you would want to change this file name or whatnot, you can just go into there and, and modify it to the new file name, and it, it will load whatever file you give it. Yeah, okay, that's, that's it. Mm -hmm.